All right, welcome back. Today we're gonna mount the side rail hinges onto the zebra box. I use a high point side rail hinge. They're solid brass. They're designed for medium duty use. Um, I've never had an issue with these. You get what you pay for. They are $30 a piece. However, if you've ever seen hinges, these are substantially thick. Um, overall, it's a quarter inch. Um, so you've got an eighth on, on each solid brass. It's got its own kick stop to where it sits back at a 95 degree angle. Um, I find them very solid to work with. They come with solid brass screws. They even include an extra one. I have this kit here. I put them all here. This is literally my hinge. Whenever I do hinges, I pull this out. Um, we'll get into why I need this. It's called screw loop. Um, it's a very basic setup to be able to do this. Now I talked about plates. This plate is a little oversized to the bit because most of our dust collection is gonna suck down because we're actually gonna root the groove on the inside. So we're gonna go ahead and get that plate in there. Um, which when you put these plates in, since it's designed, it's actually left tight. All right, so right now we're worried about height setup. All right, so I have my bit where my bit is. I have my adjustment tool so that you can see what I'm doing here. We're actually going to take this and we're gonna set it right there. I'm gonna take that blade, lower it and lower it. And once again, my power supply is off. So, I mean, we're, we need to go down a little more. I think we're good. All right, now when I spray finish in there, it's gonna up that hinge just a little bit. So I think we have this set really well. The way you can check is you just rub your finger to it. Ah, you can't really see. But you just rub your finger to it and feel that blade stick up a little bit. Now I don't need both hinges to do that. what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna set them to the side, but you want this a nice place. We've got our blade height set. I'm gonna throw this out of the way. I have a scrap piece. My fence comes with an auto stop. Now I have actually cut a cheater because you route one and one eighth inch in. So we're actually gonna bring this fence forward. Nice smooth operation. Now when you set this, you actually need your blade, that edge to be as close as possible to pointing towards that stop. So that we can just move this in and we're just gonna move it in till it touches and then we're gonna screw it down. Now, as you can tell, the stop is designed. There is room under there, I'll show you. There's, there's room under there and that's so that dust can kick out. You don't want your dust to protrude when you're cutting the hinges. So, set that back down there. Put my cheater in case I gotta adjust it. I got out a piece of scrap wood. It doesn't matter what kind of scrap wood you use as long as it's over this bit size. This bit size is 7 16 It's an odd ball type size. I use it like crazy because these are the only hinges I will use for an heirloom box and or a humidor unless I need some extra reinforcement or the customer wants to save more money. I do have another hinge option, which is a little harder to do, but it at least saves them some money. All right. So since we have our stopper here, we're going to feed this way. I'm not worried about this fine tune adjustment yet. We're going to see where it lands on this because it's approximately this thickness. Now, one thing I did not show in the video when I cut this lid off, all right, I actually had a reference point as to where it belongs. So I went ahead and I marked where my hinge needs to come through on both sides. And you don't want to get turned around. I'll set that on my handy dandy cart. Same thing with this side. I have a reference point. All right. 
<coughs> now the way this works is that we're just going to nicely feed it through here we're not going to force it this is a fine blade we're going to spin it super fast um and actually let me check my speed here it is a low diameter bit and so i'm going to turn those rpms up a little bit not all the way up i'm going to tone it down just a smidge because we are working with the hard wood um now i'm going to go ahead and turn on my power supply even though router's still off i'm going to kick on some dust collection here i'm going to show you just how easy this is test piece I didn't set my fence. Because all we're doing is checking for height. Now as you can see, she's nice and flush there. And that's exactly what we're looking for. Now, now we're going to adjust it to where I actually went. As far as into the tree, and I'm gonna eyeball this to the center. Um, I've been doing these a lot, so it actually doesn't take much. Just think about a fence like this and a door like this. Um, this specific type of setup, if it does not have to be completely parallel, I'm gonna move that fence out just a little bit. You guys see why when I'm done? Um, because I really want it to be as fair as possible. I'm gonna tighten that fence back down and not make the same mistake twice. Okay, so I'm gonna tighten that fence back down just a little bit. Now, what Looking real good. And now, you can see it doesn't want to go back down. Um, and we're going to get to that in a second. First things first, though, we have our height set. And it's off. Make sure my actual edge comes in place. You're right here. Now, we're going to be done both of those sides. We're actually going to take this block, we're going to move it to the other side. By doing that, I'm literally just going to get around that bit. I know it's on, but I'm not. I'm pretty sure we're going to land about right here. And we're going to double check once again that we're going to get the right set by using this other side of the piece. Because we're going to flow from the other direction. I highly recommend, if you want, the people designed to take some of that dust through that fence. Double down there just slightly, but I keep an air compressor close by. Um, I'm going to look at a fine wood look like this. One thing I want to point out is that the typical feed direction is from right to left. So when you're routing this hinge on the other side, it's going to want to, it's, 
it's designed to go the other way. So you gotta take your time a little slower, otherwise it's gonna bounce around on you. And you don't want that. So, hinge is good. We're nice and in there. Um, and so now, we're actually going to raise this bit. We don't even need the stopper anymore. It's super simple. Um, we don't need it. I'm gonna put that away over here. We're actually gonna raise the blade again. That way, the catch stop as it flips out is gonna catch it. So I'm actually gonna go one revolution and I'm gonna check to make sure on my cheater that we are gonna have the appropriate depth. Now the way that this works and the reason why you can eyeball it is because you actually only have to go that blade distance into the piece. Kick on dust collection. And as simple as that, I'm gonna put that in there, and we're gonna check it because I think I actually need to go one more. Um, but what we're looking for is that this piece doesn't touch. Now I don't like the clearance on that because it's right there and once I spray a little lacquer in there, it's gonna build up a little bit. Um, and so I found that to be an issue over time uh, by doing this, so I'm just gonna take a half a revolution to fine tune that up a little bit by 230 seconds, which is a blood spread better. Now we have every single one of them the way that we're supposed to have them. And now, these should just slide right on in there. And if you can tell, we have that gap we need to work with. Um, these are actually designed just a little further so you can see. They're actually designed to stick out a little bit. Um, that And they're solid brass. They're gonna look beautiful forever. You'll always be able to clean them up. Um, they're not gonna distort, they're not gonna rust. Sure, you might over time get that little bit of green, um, which uh, is common with brass, but these aren't gonna see a lot of dramatic uh, changes in the environment by being kept in the house. Whereas solid brass outside, um, you will find, uh, you'll always see those old houses where they used to use solid brass hinges and, and locks and, you know, um, and those are the ones that really need maintained. I, I've been using these forever. I've never had a complaint. Um, they are solid. It's why I use them. However, once again, they cost $30 a pop, but you get what you pay for. I've learned that with hinges. I've used everything from a hinge from Hobby Lobby to graduating to Lowe's, Menards, Home Depot, and now I just find that you can go to Woodcraft specifically. Woodcraft has the best selection as far as it comes with hinges. And I will tell you, High Point makes a great quality hinge and they make them simple to install. I've never found another brand that is as easy for boxes to do what we're doing right now. Thank you all for watching. Right now, we're not actually gonna screw in the hinges or anything like that. We've got a little bit more work to do before we get to that stage. Thanks for watching.